we're going to prove that the sum of the first n powers of 2 is one less than the next power of 2. So as it's written here, we're proving that 2 to the 0 plus 2 to the 1 plus 2 squared plus all the way up to plus 2 to the n is 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. One less than the next power of 2. I'll mention that several times in this lesson, I'll say that we're talking about the sum of the first n powers of 2. Just know that's a little sloppy because we are also including 2 to the power of 0. So technically, we're talking about n plus 1 powers of 2. But we're adding 2 to the 0 plus 2 to the 1 up through 2 to the n. So I hope you'll understand what I mean when I say the sum of the first n powers of 2. We'll prove this using induction, and I definitely recommend giving it a try yourself before watching the rest of the lesson. This is right up there with as easy of an induction proof as you're going to get. Remember that every good induction proof begins with the basis step, where we prove our result is true for the first number of interest. Oftentimes, that first number is 1 or 0. In this case, it happens to be 0. So our claim is that 2 to the 0 should equal the next power of 2, which is 2 to the 1, minus 1. In the basis step, we have to verify that. Is it true? Well, 2 to the power of 0, let me rewrite that 0, 2 to the power of 0 is 1, which is indeed equal to 2 minus 1, which is of course 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. So we see that the 0th power of 2 is 1 less than the next power of 2. Our basis step checks out. Oftentimes, as is the case here, the basis step is not particularly interesting. So just for your own sake, I recommend looking at an example with a slightly higher n value. So for example, let's see what happens if we add the first three powers of two. Again, this isn't part of the proof, it's just something you might wanna do to see the result in action yourself. Two to the zero plus two to the one plus two squared. This is equal to one plus two plus four, which is equal to seven, which you may notice is equal to eight minus one, which is indeed equal to two cubed minus one. So again, we see if we add powers of two from zero to two, that's equal to the next power of two minus one. All right, let's finish the proof with the induction step. Next, in the induction step, we assume that our result is true for some number of interest, some non-negative integer k. So we're assuming that two to the zero plus two to the one up through plus two to the k is one less than the next power of two. So two to the k plus one minus one. We're assuming that's true for some non-negative integer k. We know that's a valid assumption because we already proved that it's true for some non-negative integer, in particular zero. And remember, in an induction proof, we want to use this induction hypothesis to prove that it must also be true for the next number. So this is what we want to show. We want to show that if adding two to the zero through two to the k is one less than the next power of two, then adding two to the zero through two to the k plus one is one less than the next power of two. Then we will have proven that our result is true for the first number, and that if it's true for any number, it's true for the next number, and thus by the principle of mathematical induction, our result would be proven. Now, how can we use our induction hypothesis to prove what we want. Well, let's erase the word want and start working with this. We, of course, don't know that it's equal to two to the k plus two minus one. That's what we're trying to prove. But we do know that this is equal to this, which is two to the k plus one minus one by our induction hypothesis plus two to the k plus one. So by our induction hypothesis, this sum is equal to two to the k plus one minus one plus two to the k plus one. Again, that's because this sum is equal to this, and then we have that extra two to the k plus one. Then working with this, addition is commutative. So we could bring the two to the k plus ones together and write this as two to the k plus one 
plus two to the k plus one. And then of course we have our minus one at the end. But then two to the k plus one plus two to the k plus one, another way we could write that is two times two to the k plus one, because we have two copies of two to the k plus one. And then again, don't forget the minus one. But then we've got bases of two here getting multiplied together. So we can just add the exponents. This base of two has an exponent of one, and this base of two has an exponent of k plus one. And so conveniently, this is equal to two to the power of k plus two minus one. And that's exactly what we wanted to show. We have that adding two to the zero plus two to the one up through two to the k plus one is one less than the next power of two, two to the k plus two minus one. Thus, if our result is true for some non-negative integer, it must be true for the next non-negative integer. And so it's true for all non-negative integers. So that's the proof. The interesting thing about this is that it's an easy proof, but you know, we do have to prove it. If you write this result in our decimal system, it doesn't look obvious. It does need a proof. But if you were to write this in binary, a base two number system, it would be immediately obvious. For example, let's try adding the first five powers of two in binary. In binary, two to the zero is just one, 2 to the 1 looks like a 10, 2 to the 2 looks like a 100, 2 to the 3 looks like 1,000, 2 to the 4 looks like 10,000, and 2 to the 5 looks like 100,000. If we were to add up all these binary numbers, we would get 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And this is very obviously one less than two to the power of six. It's one less than the next power of two. It's obvious because if you were to add one, then this would be two, which in binary means that we'd have to carry a one up here, but then this would be two, so we'd have to carry another one, then we'd have to carry a one, then we'd have to carry a one, then we'd have to carry a one, and then finally that one would pop out over here as the next power of two. So if we were to add one to this, all of the digits would go to zero and then the next power of two would pop out at the end. So in our decimal system, this is the sum of two to the power of zero up through two to the power of five, which is 63. And then this, when we add one is two to the power of six, which is 64. So I hope that helps you appreciate that this result isn't weird at all. It's very natural and very obvious if we just write it in a different number system. And I think that's pretty cool. That's cool.